Hello there. Our political class is completely devoid of any ideas about how to dig the UK out of this mire, apart from more open borders, more debt, an even larger state, and destroying our economy through net zero as fast as humanly possible. The PM Rishi Sunak has just laid on a press conference where he said the Rwanda judgment by the Supreme Court will not dent the government's resolve to beat the small boats. And also that if necessary, he would revisit our international agreements if required to make the flights to Rwanda possible. Here's what he said. I do not agree with this decision, but I respect it and accept it. The rule of law is fundamental to our democracy. We have prepared for all outcomes of this case. And so we have been working on a new international treaty with Rwanda. This will provide a guarantee in law that those who are relocated from the UK to Rwanda will be protected against removal from Rwanda. And it will make clear that we will bring back anyone if ordered to do so by a court. We will finalise the treaty in light of today's judgment and ratify it without delay. But we need to end the merry-go-round. I said I was going to fundamentally change our country, and I meant it. So I am also announcing today that we will take the extraordinary step of introducing emergency legislation. This will enable Parliament to confirm that with our new treaty, Rwanda is safe. It will ensure that people cannot further delay flights by bringing systemic challenges in our domestic courts and stop our policy being repeatedly blocked. But of course, we must be honest about the fact that even once Parliament has changed the law here at home, we could still face challenges from the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. I told Parliament earlier today that I'm prepared to change our laws and revisit those international relationships to remove the obstacles in our way. So let me tell everybody now, I will not allow a foreign court to block these flights. If the Strasbourg court chooses to intervene against the expressed wishes of Parliament, I am prepared to do what is necessary to get flights off. I will not take the easy way out, because I fundamentally do not believe that anyone thinks the founding aims of the European Convention on Human Rights was to stop a sovereign Parliament removing illegal migrants to a country deemed to be safe in parliamentary statute and binding international law. And I do not believe that we are alone in that interpretation. Across Europe, other governments are following our lead. Italy, Germany, Austria are all exploring models like ours. Indeed, the UNHCR operates its own refugee scheme in Rwanda. And unlike the UK, they don't have a treaty for any of this. We are a reasonable government, and this is a reasonable country. But the British people's patience can only be stretched so thin, and they expect the boats to be stopped. That is why I made it one of my five priorities. And whatever our critics might say, we are making progress. He could have done that months ago. Now this Supreme Court setback today will end up with new legislation, being challenged once again over many, many months in the High Court, the Court of Appeal, and once again in the Supreme Court. By then it will be election time, at which point Starmer and his lefty open border types will just reverse the lot. So as far as I'm concerned, this has been a long process of the Tories trying to set up a general election battlefield next year of border control versus open borders. Then lose in the courts again. I don't trust them. Now I'll start by laying it on the line. We're in a mess because virtually no one within the House of Commons, the House of Lords, nor the Civil Service has any intention of protecting our way of life and the natural people of the UK. No one, except for politicking before they once again let us down. 
In fact, for most of them, the only part of our UK heritage and way of life they wish to retain is our welcoming tolerance and obeying outside laws to our own detriment. Apart from that, it seems we ordinary people can shove it while they virtue signal. These confected uniparty rows about asylum and immigration are just that, confected. We know nothing will change, they know nothing will change and they know we know it. In fact, most are hoping that nothing will change. They either have corporate or political vested interests in maintaining the status quo. The Tories and Labour are now interchangeable. And those like Suella Braverman, who don't toe the line, are replaced by wet liberal ex-Tory prime ministers. If Sunak is so committed to this line, the Braverman line, then why not keep her, instead of plotting for what must have been weeks to get Cameron in? And as an aside, wouldn't Cameron have had to go through a lengthy procedure to be accepted by the House of Lords in the first place? The government of this Conservative and Unionist party in name only is now fatally holed below the waterline in several places. If Rishi Sunak, the current but maybe not for much longer leader of the Tory party and Prime Minister, thought that bringing David Cameron back from the political graveyard with a surprise peerage and vaulting him into the Foreign Office over the heads of his 350 MPs was going to do him any favours, then all I can say is that his judgement is far from sound. And surely the calculatedly venomous resignation epistle to Rishi Sunak from Suella Braverman must have sealed the demise of this sad Tory excuse for a government. Where the now former Home Secretary berates the PM for his inability to get Rwanda done, as well as his failure to rise to the challenge posed by the increasingly vicious anti-Semitism and extremism displayed on our streets since Hamas's terrorist atrocities of the 7th of October. A letter she signed off by saying, I will, of course, continue to support the government in pursuit of policies which align with an authentic conservative agenda. There is absolutely no chance of this Tory party ever following a Conservative agenda ever again. They are finished. And forget the triumph of halving of inflation down to 4.6%. Rishi Sunak and Jeremy Hunt only promised that because they knew it would happen by default anyway. But to think they even for one second believed that the UK Supreme Court would rule in their favour on Rwanda was unicorn thinking of the highest order, or just a cynical delaying ploy. And when the lead judge opens up with the statement that the Supreme Court judgment is not politically driven, it tells you all you need to know about the state of our public institutions. It's like the police telling us they are even-handed with protesters. And the reason the government appeal to the Supreme Court failed is because the judges thought that Rwanda, either through sloppy procedures or intent, would send some at-risk refugees back to their home country where they could be persecuted. It seems that the only safe place for the whole human race is in the UK. But the PM and the new Home Secretary, James Cleverley, have stated they will plough on with the Rwanda scheme on the basis that the Supreme Court had not ruled the concept of sending people to Rwanda as unlawful of itself, only that sufficient safeguards to stop at-risk refugees ending up in the country they left in the first place had not been put in place. This leaves Sunak and Cleverly having to work through the Supreme Court judgment to see where they go next. But as has always been apparent, it will take primary statute legislation to change the legal framework sufficiently to allow the Rwanda deal to function properly.
something he's now promising to do if required. Otherwise, it's just more wasted time and more wasted money on lawyers. But at the end of the day, I don't think that Rishi Sunak and especially James Cleverley and David Cameron have any real intention of disturbing any of these laws. I think they just want to last the term out in the hope of salvaging a few seats by not rocking any boats. And Labour's answer to all of this is to spend more money on more people to rubber stamp more approvals through faster. And I will also add that this is about stopping small boat crossings. Does that mean that all the undocumented flights into local airfields and people in the backs of cars, trucks and coaches has ended? Richard. So, after the courts have kicked the Rwanda scheme into the long grass, I have to ask if any of you still think the vote matters. Any of you? After all, the entire system from His Majesty's judiciary to His Majesty's government, well, they're all hell-bent on doing nothing to tackle our immigration problem. And Suella Braverman has quite eloquently highlighted this very fact with her resignation letter. But also, His Majesty recently even said that he wanted refugees to come to Britain and feel more welcome here in Britain. Ah... I think what he's actually trying to say is that he wants open borders and to surrender all power and sovereignty to his friends in the World Economic Forum. The political system has failed us. Our politicians have failed us. The constitutional monarchy that underpins our society has failed us. And we are now at a tipping point where the elite are welcoming into this country potential enemy combatants. So. Who is there to turn to? I'm afraid we need to have the mavericks. Yes, we need the mavericks to come out. These people who don't comply with the system, men who don't sit well amongst the corrupt, men like a certain Mr. Fox and a certain Mr. Robinson, men who stand out, men who stand up. We need truth tellers, not yarn spinners. Men who will get the job done, men and women, of course, who will order the civil service to do what the people voted the system to do or face being arrested for treason. For now, I will still vote for reclaim or reform, but I don't think it will do any good because unfortunately most of my fellow countrymen and women will be voting red or blue out of their respective reactionary fears. And we can't blame them for doing so because the media are still fooling people in, into making people think that voting Tory or Labour will in some way affect change in their lives. We all have that family member who buys, you know, still buys into the media claptrap. I want to see a leader who will personally escort unwanted boats back to France whilst playing Land of Hope and Glory very loudly over a tannoy system. Anyway, leave your dribbles and drabbles in the comment section below for Jeff and I to read. And a huge thank you, a huge thank you to, uh, don't turn off, I haven't finished speaking. Yes, a huge thank you to all those who support us via Patreon, PayPal and Super Thanks, because you help keep this channel going and producing uh, very well, as regular videos as we can possibly, possibly produce. Anyway, links on how to support us in the descriptions box below. Right, I'm off to eat some mincemeat. God bless you all and bye for now.